When interpreting DNA test results for genetic genealogy, it's important to remember that we inherit 50% of our DNA from our mom and 50% of our DNA from our dad. They received half of their DNA from their moms and their dads and so on back through time. This is your genetic genealogy, the DNA you inherited from your ancestors. Some things carried forward over the generations, some things got dropped along the way. When you send in your DNA kit for testing, you get back an aggregate set of results. For example, these are my raw results I downloaded for my 23andMe test. It's a bunch of A's, T's, C's, and G's at different segments of my chromosomes. It doesn't make much sense, but here's what that means. You have 23 chromosomes, and all along that chromosome, you have data, which is made up of those A's, T's, C's, and G's. Half of it's from one parent, half from the other. But I don't know which came from which, because the testing company doesn't sort it out for you. It's all mixed up. My relatives also inherited the same patterns of A's, T's, C's, and G's from our mutual ancestors, and we match at various points. The problem is I don't know which side the inheritance came from yet because it's still mixed up between my mom and my dad's sides. The process of assigning which genetic data you received from your mom and her ancestors versus what you received from your dad and his ancestors is called phasing. So when we're talking about genetic views, you'll hear them referred to as phased or unfazed, meaning this data has been sorted and assigned to my mother or father, phased, or this data hasn't yet been assigned to a parent, unfazed. When you first import your data into Roots Finder, it's unfazed. It hasn't been assigned to a parent yet. Fortunately, Roots Finder provides you with some powerful tools that will help you phase your data and assign it to a specific parent. In order to do this, you need either some understanding of your family tree, or if you don't know about your tree, for example if you're an adoptee, you need access to tree data for your matches from the testing company or from GEDmatch so you can figure out which side of the tree those matches come from. One of the most powerful tools for this is the segment view. The best segment data comes from GEDmatch. So this example is from my Ancestry.com test processed through GEDmatch. When I first import my DNA test into Roots Finder to interpret it, I see all 23 of my chromosomes down the screen here. When I click a segment to open it, I see boxes with circles. Those boxes represent segments along my DNA where I have matches, which are the little circles inside the boxes. That means someone else from the testing company has the same combination of A's, T's, C's, and G's at this area on the chromosome. When they're big boxes, I know it's pretty recent in time because it hasn't had time to be split by different DNA contributor in my ancestry. So here on my chromosome 1, I have a bigger box, which represents a fairly large chunk of shared DNA with this kit. I've anonymized her as Madame Curie. I see that Madame Curie has been kind enough to share her family tree at GEDmatch, so I can take a look at her tree and I can see our mutual ancestors here, Thomas Charles Smith and Olive Elizabeth Jenkins. Now I can tag her as a descendant of that couple in Roots Finder, which places her on my father's side. This makes her circle blue, corresponding to our mutual ancestor's location in my family tree, as shown in the color-coded fan chart. Now I want to see who else Madame Curie is related to. To do this, I'm going to switch over to my Roots Finder triangulation view. Here's Madame Curie, this blue node I've tagged here in the center. I want to shut out all these other nodes and focus only on Madame Curie's connections for now, so I'm going to filter to her. This gives me a distinct cluster I can work with. To see these kits in a list, I click this icon above the side panel here. And in reviewing the list, I see someone I recognize, my cousin E. So I can tag her to EF in my tree. That gives me another known data point to work with. If I want to, I can assign all these connected kits to our common ancestors using the paint roller here to assign them to a location in my tree. Now when I return to my segment view, I'm starting to see the locations on my chromosomes where I inherited DNA from my dad's side with all these blue kits here. I'm going to take the filter off so I can see all my matches again, and then I'm going to keep repeating this process, looking for kits with trees. 
To do this, I may want to switch to the list view and then look for the tree icon. That tells me there's a corresponding tree at GEDmatch for me to review where I can look for common ancestors like PK and BBC1. As I work my way through my matching kits, the color coding starts to phase, showing me where I've inherited DNA from my mom and where I've inherited from my dad. Now check out the other videos about interpreting your DNA results for more examples of using the Roots Finder tools for genetic genealogy.